Hamilton. He puts up the floater. Wow. Trey, three from the wing. Oh, my, my, my. Whoa. So I want to start with last year. What lessons did you personally, Trey, take from the Miami loss in the playoffs? They definitely exposed a lot of our weaknesses as far as just maybe not having another guy out there that can create for somebody else and, and get other guys involved. Because they were doing a lot of trapping and sitting guys at boxes and, and elbows, making sure I didn't get into the paint. I think the, the front office went out and, and they thought about it. I know that's why DeJounte's here. Welcome DeJounte Murray. <laughs> sure. Murray puts up the jump shot. Got it! Oh! DeJounte Murray. How hard is it at times to relinquish the ball? Uh, if I'm going to be honest with you, it's, it's not hard at all. I mean, in high school, I, I played with the number one player in my class, and Michael Porter. I was OK with it because we won a championship. Just going through that experience really prepared me for whenever I got to the stage and I needed somebody else to help me win a championship. Trey and DeJounte ready to go to work. One of the things I marvel at is how much mental mapping of the floor is occurring as you're just dribbling and trying to navigate. I'm always looking and searching to see whether there's a mismatch or whether there's a crease. To your point, like in this instance, they're, Roll it. they're trapping. Okay. When I'm dribbling it, yeah. you see I'm looking at Cade. So that's really my read right here is I'm, I'm seeing Cade. Whether if Cade comes in, I'm hitting DeJounte. First of all, look at your shoulders are left and your vision is left. Mm -hmm. And so look at where the defender's eyes are going. This is so beautiful. And then what happens? Boom. Yep, it's like reading a quarterback. <laughs> guys read your eyes. So like you can look guys off, you can look big men up and they'll jump or it's just little things. All right, so we're going to play a game. Mm -hmm. Because your floater and your lob are so similar, I'm going to try to make a guess as did he go to the floater or did he go to score? All right. All right, so you're attacking the middle of the floor. You are smack dab in the middle of five defenders. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying lob. Yeah. Do you remember it? I think I floated this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now listen, even that one right there, roll it back just a touch. Watch the arc on the shot. Does the arc on your floater change depending on, like, look at, is that higher than typical? For sure. I always knew I needed the floater, and I've practiced it since I was, Probably in sixth, fifth grade, my dad would hold up a broom above the above the goal, and I would practice shooting it above the broom, shooting it high with high arc. All right, let's see. He's getting below the free throw line. I'm gonna say. Now listen, Clint is sprinting. I'm gonna say you go to the floater here. Nah, this is the lob. This is the, this is the lob. <laughs> this is the lob at the left. <laughs> Clearly, I'd be getting dumped on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you would have stayed with Clint, that would have been one. All right, give me one more. I hate being wrong. I just want you to know. All right. Killian. Uh, now I'm going to go Ooh, lob. This may get me. I don't know about this one. OK, let's see. This yeah. is too great. I mean, listen, this is the beauty of your game, and it does help that I don't know and the defender doesn't know. Mm -hmm. That's the point of it. I'm glad you caught that. I have to use my, my cerebral abilities to my advantage. So me not being the biggest guy or the guy who can jump the highest, I got to be able to outthink the defense. 